Hey guys, it's Gwyneth, um, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing a, um, like, what to read this fall video. Uh, so I'm just going to show you some books that I checked out from the library and have really been loving recently. Um, and I hope that you enjoy um, these books as well. Most of these I haven't read. Um, there's one in this list that I'm currently reading. And yeah, I thought it would just be a fun idea to share some of my favorite reads for fall. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Okay. So this first book I have here is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Um, I'm pretty sure it's like a retelling of the Iliad and the Odyssey. Um, and fun fact, um, my high school, they did a play version of the Iliad and the Odyssey during my freshman year. So I have some knowledge um, of the Greek mythology and the story. Uh, I watched the play uh, at my school um, like when I was a freshman in high school, which would have been like three years ago which is crazy to think about um yeah so i kind of know a little bit about the story but not really but this is really popular especially like on book talk and booktube so i thought it would be fun to check out um and right now i'm just gonna read um the description for you it says tale of gods and goddesses kings and queens immortal fame and the human heart achilles the best of all the greeks son of the cruel Thetis and legendary King Peleus is strong, swift, and irresistible to all who meet him. Patroclus is an awkward exiled from his homeland after an act of shocking violence. Brought together by chance, they forge an inseparable bond despite risking the... They are trained by the centaur Chiron in the arts and war. When word comes out the Helen of Sparta has been kidnapped, and all of Greece are called upon to lay siege to Troy in her name. Seduced by the promise of a glorious destiny. Achilles joins their cause, and torn between love and fear for his friend Patroclus follows. Little did they know that the cruel fates will test them both as never before and demand a huge sacrifice. So yeah, uh, I'm really interested to read this book. It's very like mythology and fantasy kind of, which is something that I haven't read a lot of since middle school when um, I read the um, Mortal Instruments series, but I'm really excited to get back into fantasy since I've been reading a lot of more contemporary very recently um, and not a lot of like fantasy, especially like YA fantasy. Okay, so this next book I have is Girl in Translation by Jean Kwok. Um, I've heard of this book. I'm not exactly sure what it's about, but I just, I really like the cover, so, uh, I wanted to pick it out. Um, I think I'm gonna read the synopsis right now. Um, it says, When young Kimberly Chang and her mother immigrate from Hong Kong to America, they speak no English and own nothing but death. Death. They arrive in New York hopeful for a better life, but find instead a squalid Brooklyn apartment and backbreaking labor in a Chinatown sweatshop. Unable to accept this as her future, Kim decides to use her talent for school to earn a place for herself and her mother in their adopted country. Disguising the most difficult truths of her meager existence, Kim embarked on a double life, an exceptional student by day and a sweatshop worker by evening. In time, Kim learns to translate not just her language but herself, back and forth between two worlds, between hardship and triumph, heartbreak and love, and all that gets lost in translation. So yeah, um, that is the description of this story. Um, and I think this is more of like an adult fiction book as opposed to like um, YA fiction. So yeah, uh, I found this really interesting and it also said here it's a national bestseller. So that's cool. Um, and also um, my dad's from Hong Kong. So I guess I can kind of relate to the protagonist of the story. And like, I just love the cover. Like she just stuck a pencil through her hair. Like, I feel like it's really hard to do. Like, I like, to put a pencil through your hair and for it to stick. I know this is kind of off the topic, but yeah. Um, okay. This next book I have here is Where'd You Go, Bernadette by, um, what's her name? Um, Maria Semple. Um, and this is a book I'm currently reading. I'm about on page 50 right now. And it's pretty interesting so far. It's basically like, it's like 
a book, obviously. But like, instead of just having like, just like the narration, it also has parts that it's like an email or like text message, which is pretty cool. It's like a multimedia format that I'm not really used to, but it's been a pretty engaging book so far and I'm excited to see what happens next. Um, so here's the description. It says, when 15 year old B claims a family trip to Antarctica as a reward for perfect grades, her fiercely intelligent but agoraphobic mother, Bernadette, throws herself into preparations for the trip. Worn down by years of trying to live the Seattle life she never wanted, Bernadette is on the brink of a meltdown. As disaster follows disaster, she disappears, leaving her family to pick up the pieces, which is exactly what B does, weaving together emails, invoices, and school memos to reveal the secret past that Bernadette has been hiding for years. Where you go, Bernadette is an ingenious entertaining novel about a family coming to terms with who they are and the power of a daughter's love for her imperfect mother um so yeah this was also made into a movie in like 2019 um i believe so yeah um that's pretty cool and also uh this is a random sign up but i am going um to seattle in winter break so like i'm really excited to see like what the culture there is like since i've never been before like to the pacific northwest the farthest up north I've ever been is probably like San Francisco, so yeah. Um, this next book I have here is um, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Uh, she also read the Dr. Shane of Magic series, I believe. I'm pretty sure I read the first one, but to be honest, like I don't remember what it's about. But yeah. Um, Okay, I'm gonna read the description here. It says, Never pray to the gods that answer after dark. France, 1714. In a moment of desperation, a young woman named Adeline meets a dangerous stranger and makes a terrible mistake. As she realizes the limitations of her fustian bargain, being able to live forever, without being able to be remembered by anyone she sees, Addie chooses to flee her small village, as everything she once held dear is torn away. But there are still dreams to be had, and a life to live, and she is determined to find excitement and satisfaction in the wide beckoning world, even if she will be doomed to be alone forever. We're not quite alone, as every year, on her birthday, the, the alluring Luce comes to visit, checking to see if she is ready to give up her soul. Their darkly thrilling game stretches the, through the ages, seeing Addie witness testimony and fight to regain herself as she crosses oceans and tries on various lives. It will be 300 years before she stumbles into a hidden bookstore and discovers someone who can remember her name. And sadly, everything changes again. Um, I'm really interested in the plot of this story. I think it's very unique. And I'm not exactly sure what it's about. But I've heard really good reviews uh, of it, like on Goodreads and stuff. So yeah, I'm really excited to read uh, this book. And there's even some blurbs on the back. Okay, this next book is kind of a classic. And I got it wet, so I hope I don't get in trouble with the library. But it is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Um, I've never read this before, but I've definitely heard of it. It's like a very popular book. Um, and it was published in the 1960s, I believe. Um, and it's basically about the protagonist, Esther, Esther Greenwood's like struggle with um, depression and like figuring out like how she wants to like make her mark on the world so i thought that was a pretty interesting topic so it says here the bell jar chronicles the crack up of esther greenwood brilliant beautiful enormously talented and successful but slowly going under maybe for the last time sylvia plus masterfully draws into esther's breakdown with such intensity that esther's insanity seems completely real and even rational as probable and accessible and accessible as going to the movies such deep penetration into the dark corners of the psyche is an extraordinary accomplishment and the bell jar is a haunting american classic so yeah um i've never read sylvia plus book before i mean i think she mostly publishes poems but i'm really interested to read this since it's a, like a classic and kind of like feminist novel even though i've heard there's like some racism in it which is not great but yeah Okay, here's this next book, which is like a contemporary, I think. It's called Follow Your Arrow. Oh, well. Um, here's the back. Um, yeah, I think it's like about a social media influencer or something. It's really interesting because I do follow a lot of social media influencers. And I even have this crisp receipt in the library. Okay, maybe that's too much information. Um, okay, it says here, Cece Ross is kind of a big deal. 
She and her girlfriend Sylvie are social media influencers with zillions, well, I think it's a little bit exaggeration, of fans and followers, known for their cute outfits and being hashtag relationship goals. So when Sylvie breaks up with her, Cece is devastated. She's lost her first love, and now she can't help but wonder if she'll lose her followers as well. Things get messier when Cece meets Josh, a new boy in town who is very much not online. Cece isn't surprised to be falling for a guy. She's always known she's bi, and Josh, Josh is sweet and smart and has excellent taste in donut. Donut? Okay, this is a little cringe, not gonna lie. But he has no idea that Cece is internet famous, and Cece sort of wants to keep it that way. But Cece soon finds herself in the middle of an online storm, well, where she'll have to confront the blurriness of public versus private life and figure out what it really means to speak her truth. Perfect for fans of Becky Albertalia and Adam Silvera, this is a riveting and irresistible take on love, life, and identity, both online and off. So I thought the premise was really interesting because like, you don't really read a look a lot of books about social media influencers so i thought that was an interesting topic and i think it also deals with like internet fame and like celebrity culture which is something that is definitely like something i'm interested in so yeah okay this next book is second chance summer by morgan matheson uh, she also writes a lot of like YA contemporaries and i've read a lot of her contemporary books like this one amy and rogers epic detour and since you've been gone i think and probably more but i can't think of them right now um so yeah i think it was the unexpected everything that i also read um here's the description it says taylor edwards has a tendency to run away when things get tough but when her father is diagnosed with stage four cancer taylor knows this is one situation she can't unrun to have one last summer together taylor's parents decide to take the family back to their old lake house in the Pocono's. Even though Taylor is, was 12 the last time she went to Lake Phoenix, people she left behind are still there. Like her former best friend Lucy, who's still hurting from a long ago betrayal, and her first crush Henry, who's gotten five years cuter. With nights full of fireflies and fireworks, the summer holds the possibility of forgiveness and maybe even love. Taylor wants to hold on to the moment instead of walking away, so, but she knows the end of the summer is getting closer and that time is running out to make the most of her second chance. So this is like um, a summer romance, which is always fun to read, especially during the summer. Even though right now, um, where I live um, in the US, it's currently almost gonna be winter, like Christmas season. Um, but yeah, it's just like another fun and cute contemporary that I'm really excited um, to read. Um, and yeah. So the next book, um, I'm going to be showing you guys is Love and Luck by Jenna Evans Welch, which is a sequel to the first book, I think, Love and Gelato. Um, it's another like YA contemporary. Um, as you can tell, I've read quite a lot of these, even though they can be kind of like cheesy. I think they're like a fun summer read or just any time of the year, really, just like to curl up the good book um, and like a lighthearted storyline. So yeah, the description says, I wanted this to be real life, not a detour. Addie is visiting Ireland for her aunt's over-the-top destination wedding and hoping she can stop thinking about the one horrible thing that left her miserable and heartbroken and threatens her future. But her brother Ian isn't about to let her forget and his constant needing, needling leads to arguments and even a fistfight between the two once inseparable siblings. But when Addie discovers the unusual guidebook, Ireland for the Heartbroken, hidden in the dusty shelves of the hotel library. She's finally able to escape her anxious mind and Ian's criticism. And then their plans change. Suddenly, Addie finds herself on a whirlwind tour of the Emerald Isle, trapped in the world's smallest vehicle with Ian and his admittedly cute Irish student, Fred Rowan. As the journey, as the trip journeys over breathtaking green hills, past countless castles, and through a number of fairy tale forests, Addie ho hopes her guidebook will heal not only her broken heart, but also her shattered relationship with her brother. That is, if they don't get completely lost along the way. So I think the first book in this series focused more on Italy, and this one focuses um, on Ireland. So I guess uh, these books are just like about like an American girl who like travels to like a European country. Um, and like meets like a lot of different interesting people along the way. So, yeah. Um, so the next book I have um, on this list is 
A Lot in the Boy Next Door by Stephanie Perkins. Um, this is also a sequel. It's a sequel to Anna and the French Kiss, which I'm pretty sure I showed in my other video. But yeah, um, the description here says, Budding designer Lola Nolan doesn't believe in fashion. She believes in costume. The more expensive the outfit, the more sparkly, more fun, more wild, the better. And her life is pretty close to perfect in Lola's world, especially with her hot rocker boyfriend. That is, until the dreaded Bell twins, Calliope and Cricket, return to the neighborhood and unearth the past of her and anguish that Lola thought was all buried. When talented inventor Cricket steps out from his twin sister shadow and back into Lola's life, she must finally reconcile a lifetime of feelings for the boy next door. So this is also like another cheesy um, romance book. And it's set in San Francisco, as you can tell by the Golden Gate Bridge here. And fun fact, I actually have been to San Francisco a few times. Um, the last time I went to San Francisco was this summer. And before that, I think the last time I went was in like 2014, I believe. So yeah, I've definitely been to uh, San Francisco quite a few times. Um, and this next book I have is... Um, Parachutes by Kelly Yang, um, and here is the back side, um, and the description here says, they're called parachutes. Teenagers dropped off to live in private homes and study in the United States while their wealthy parents remain in Asia. Claire Wang never thought she'd be one of them, until her parents pluck her from her privileged life in Shanghai and enroll her at a high school in California. Suddenly, she finds herself living in a stranger's house with no one to tell her what to do for the first time in her life. She soon embraces her newfound freedom, especially when the hottest and most eligible bachelor parachute Jay asks her. Danny De La Cruz, Claire's new host sister, couldn't be less thrilled that her mom rented out a room to Claire. An academic and debate team star, Danny is determined to earn her way into Yale, even if it means competing with privileged kids who are buying their ways to talk. When her debate coach starts working with her privately, Danny's game plan veers unexpectedly off course. Desperately trying to avoid each other under the same roof, Danny and Claire find themselves on a collision course, intertwining in deeper and more complicated ways as they grapple with life altering experiences. Award winning author Kelly Yang weaves together an unforgettable modern immigrant story about love, trauma, family, corruption, and the power of speaking up. So, yeah, here's the cover again. Um, yeah, this is also like another like YA contemporary and which uh, centers around um, a Chinese uh, American protagonist. Um, so yeah. Um, this next book I have here is I Am Not Your Perfect Mexican Daughter by Erica L. Sanchez. Um, and here's the back side. Um, and it says here, Julia, definitely not your perfect Mexican daughter. She has big dreams of becoming a writer, and she refuses to allow her family's expectations to derail her plan. Julia's older sister, who was the perfect Mexican daughter, she went to a community college, worked a part-time job, and took care of her parents, until an accident left her dead and eternally perfect. Connor, a white boy from Evanston who can't possibly understand Julia's world, but wants to be a part of it anyway. Angie, Olga's best friend who lets slip that there may have might have been more to Olga than everyone thought. Lorena, Julia's best friend and polar opposite. She doesn't believe that Olga could have kept any secrets, but just stick with Julia along the way. And seriously, how on earth can Julia fall in love or find the truth under, under the never looking eyes of her parents? From debut author Erica L. Sanchez comes a laugh out loud and poignant novel about losing a sister and finding yourself. Um, so yeah, and as you can see here, it was also the National Book Award finalist, so that's pretty cool, I guess. Oh, and the last book I'm going to be showing in this video is Words on Bathroom Walls by Julia Walton. Um, and here's the back side. Uh, and it says here, um, here is the description. Um, it says, Adam is schizophrenic. He sees and hears people who aren't there. Rebecca, a beautiful girl who understands him, the mod boss who harasses him, and Jason, the naked guy who's unfailingly polite. It should be easy to separate the real from the not real, but Adam can't. Still, there's hope. Adam has started an experimental drug trial that helps him ignore his visitors. Now everything seems possible, even love. 
Then he meets Maya, a fiercely intelligent girl who makes him desperately want to be the great guy he, she thinks he is. When the miracle drug begins to fail, Adam will do anything to keep Maya from discovering his secret. Debut author Julia Walton tells Adam's story through a journal entry to his therapist. The result is a brilliantly honest and unexpectedly funny story about first love, self-acceptance, and the truth about the voices in your head. Um, yeah. So, oh, I think there's some water damage on this book. I don't know how that happened. I didn't do that, so yeah. Um, yeah, this is really a really interesting concept, and I also think, I believe they made a movie about it. I'll make the poster here. So yeah, anyways, I'm really excited to read these books, um, and I hope that I give you some good recommendations for some um autumn slash winter read so anyways uh thank you guys so much for watching and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below so yeah um also uh comment down below what your favorite book from this list was and i hope you i hope to see you guys soon uh have a nice day and bye